Hey folks, so here we are. Um, we're going back in time a little bit. So I had to pause in the work on the rudder because I didn't have any of that goop, if you'll remember from one of the previous videos, the sealer. Uh, once I finally got it, I had progressed on to the next section and never actually finished this one. So I'm, here I am going back to section seven, dash 10, 11, and 12. Uh, and here specifically, you see me, I'm cleaning off the top of the rudder there and cleaning out all the hole, holes on the trailing edge. I had mentioned previously that goopy stuff is really tough to work with, but I did find that um, uh, paint cl uh, thinner, like a brush cleaner, worked really well at uh, wiping it off of the uh, wing itself. And then I went and got some Windex and wiped the rest of it off because it's, you know, it's still not real clean. But using the little reamer tool to ream out all the little holes uh, and eventually I'll, I'll use like a, a uh, drill bit and just you know finger twist in there to clean the goop out of the holes themselves for when I go and, and do the riveting. I don't know if this step was necessary cleaning all that goop but I just really wanted to get it and make it look nice and so for me it was necessary. Here I'm doing the, the finger drilling out the... then I realized that you know what I don't need to use fingers <laughs> I have a drill. Work smarter, not harder, that's my theory. So right here, this is 7-10, step one. And step two, putting the spar in place. And sitting down and putting lots of little blind rivets in there. And there are a number of them. See me going back to my iPad because I'm changing what I'm listening to or I'm marking down my hours. A lot of that, remember, I'm, I'm pedantic about keeping track of how many hours uh, that I have worked on. I'm up to 115.1 um, out of, you know, 2,000 some odd. So only, only 2,000 more hours to go. Let's see, I really got to stop looking at that. Now I'm reading the instructions on how to do step three, which is the bottom rib and striker plates. Learning how to put those things on and finding parts. Uh, lots of digging through the bags to make sure I have the, uh, the right pieces. Again, I, I think one of the things that Vans needs to be better about is their organization of pieces and giving you a way to more easily find the pieces because that, that is my only complaint about this whole thing is uh, sometimes it's difficult to find a piece on the piece of paper because it could be anywhere. They're not in alphabetical order. They're not in numerical order. They're just in a random order in a bag somewhere. Honestly, though, if that's my only complaint, it's a pretty minor one. I had left a couple other rivets atop undone, uh, so what I did there is got out there and worked on some of those rivets that I needed to get done. Uh, just for whatever reason, when I when I left it off last time, I was like, yeah, I'll get to this when I get you know get around to it. And, well, that's now. This is me working on the counterbalance rib, I think. Oh, no, not yet. That's the top rib. I'm putting together the, the top rib. I'll put the counterbalance rib on shortly. I think. It's been so long, I don't remember anymore. Doing squeezers on the bottom there. All oh, right, this is step five. So you have to go in and you have to rivet all of the uh, skins to that rear spar that we had just put in with the blind rivets. One thing I found is that uh, my, my squeezer, the yoke on the squeezer could only reach so far. And so after I put them all in, uh, I had to go back and do the rest with the uh, rivet gun and bucking bar. Here I'm being, making sure that I know exactly what I'm supposed to be riveting or not because I, I want to make sure that there weren't holes I wasn't supposed to be riveting or whatnot. And there I... I'm going to be blind riveting, I guess, or is what I thought I was going to do. But then I changed my mind, I think. I was going to try to blind rivet to see if it worked, and it didn't. Uh, but I did go ahead and put all of the rivets in the holes and then use rivet tape to uh, hold them down, squeezing the ones that can be squeezed. But then I'll pick them up and use the bucking bar in the uh, jig here. That's what I'm doing now making short work of it. I would, I probably should get a slightly younger, longer yoke. They have one that's like an inch and a half longer. There have been a couple times when it's like, man, if I just had another inch on this yoke, it would make life a lot easier. Um, but you know, it's like 80 or $90 when that uh, tungsten bucking bar works just fine. Uh, yeah, so what you just saw me do is drill out two rivets because uh, this the counterbalance rib needs to go in and I riveted the skin to where the counterbalance rib was supposed to be without the counterbalance there. Whoops. So no big deal. Drill, drilled them out, put the counterbalance 
uh, rib in place and then just squeezed a couple of rivets back in and that's what you just saw me do. Mistakes will happen, guys. You know, you'll make your mistakes and you go, oh crap. And then you just undo it and the world's a better place. Uh, so here, this is the next interesting part is the riveting of that trailing edge um, using rivet tape. And I wasn't sure how this was gonna work and I had to read about this a long time because I was like, how do you, you know, it's supposed to be two, you know, perfect flat heads on either side. How do you avoid the shop head? Well, you don't. Um, you use every, you know, the way it's just describes to do it is, you know, you go every 10 or 15 rivets and you use um, a flush riveting head to kind of start it. And then once you get it started, shaped in the correct direction, you then go ahead and put it the rest of the way down uh, until it, it's smooth. It will not be perfect. And that's the thing. I didn't take a picture of this. I should have. Don't try to make it look like it's perfect, otherwise you'll just go insane and you'll you'll really screw yourself. It's so close though, once you paint it, you won't even notice. So this next part is me making this rounding. Uh, so you have to round the ends of the skins on the back here. And I didn't, I was trying to scrubble, uh, you know, struggle to figure out a good way to do this. And I found if I just got a PVC pipe, drilled holes in it and Clecoed, uh, you know, Clecoed the metal to the PVC pipe, I could then use my hands and just give it a twist and slowly, and I'm drilling out of the rivet, slowly but surely uh, bend it, which is counterintuitive, right? I mean, you, you spend a lot of time taking very careful care of this skin so as to not do the thing that you're doing right here, uh, and that's bending it. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I think this method worked really well. Just a PVC pipe, drilled holes, used some uh, fiberglass tape to uh, in between the holes and then just proceeded to just bend the crap out of it around that. Uh, that is a one and a half inch, or I think that's a one and, no, it's a one and a half inch PVC pipe. Uh, now I will say this, that um, I think in the middle, so there's, there's three sections of the skin there that you're bending. Uh, in the middle, uh, I didn't, I don't know if I didn't bend it far enough or if it just didn't quite look good, but I did act, a, actually add extra blind rivets. Um, in order to make it seal a little better. It just, it just worked a little bit better when I added a bunch of extra blind rivets between the holes. Um, for whatever reason, there's the holes get wider. Like towards the top, there's you can actually look. Towards the top, there's lots of, of, of uh, Clecos. And then as you go halfway down, then they're spaced as half as often. Well, I went ahead and, and added the rest of them. And so what I'm doing here is doing exactly that. I'm going back and I'm drilling holes and I'm adding the blind rivets and closing that rounded skin on the rudder. Kind of cool, actually. It's, it, once, once it all came together, it came together and it looked great. It looked like exactly what I, I know a rudder should look like. But up to that point, I, I was having a hard time envisioning it. And I kept checking my work, going back and forth and making sure I was doing the right thing. Because, you know, I always have this uh, fear that I'm screwing it up. But no, so far, so good. Lots of instruction reading. Next thing you have to do is crease the skins up here at the top uh, where the counter balance weight goes. And you have to drill lots of holes and it's a lot of instructions. And I actually lost some of the video around this. Uh, my camera ran out of battery just as I was starting the manual pop process where you, you tap, you, you take a drill bit and you, you start tapping the drill bit with a hammer up into the hole from the bottom side. Uh, you'll, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about as soon as you see it. Um, but yeah, it was one of those kind of weird things. Uh, but then suddenly, doink, it's gone. And then at one point my next door neighbor came over and uh, we chatted about airplanes. He's an old bush pilot from Alaska and he thought this was really cool. And it was uh, kind of neat talking to him about it. He was excited for me. So maybe we'll have another, maybe he'll build one too. I don't know. Eventually, he got, I got back to it after he left, and it's just a matter of uh, following the instructions, as always. Bending the skin. Like I said, this is one of those things that it's hard to undo, so make sure you do it correctly. And it, it calls for bending the skin with a couple pieces of wooden, you know, wood blocks. And it works really, really nicely. It's fairly easy. And uh, I used a, a paper towel wrapped around a hammer as a mallet. I don't actually have a, a soft blow mallet, and I wish I did. So right here is where I lost video, by the way. There's a point 
between um, here where I'm starting to drill and then like here where suddenly all that, all that work is done and unfortunately that video is just gone and that was probably about 20 or 30 minutes worth of work shaping that in even though it doesn't look like a big difference there was um, so at this point the next thing I'm doing is I'm going through and finding the correct screws and whatnot and once I found them I go through and drill and we go and rivet and get everything set and ready to go God, this took forever, and it's going by in a flash. <laughs> uh, anyways, so once I've got the screws in at the end, and I, I'm sitting here tightening and getting it all, all nice, it looked like this. Uh, that's a perfect seam. You can't really tell. It looks like it's bowed in the middle. It's not. It's actually a perfect seam all the way down. It came out very nice. I'm happy with how that came. Uh, there's a weight behind that, so that's your counterbalance. And then the rest of the thing uh, was just about putting the rivets in all the places that were left to be done, which was... You know, all the places I hadn't done yet. Uh, and then that was it. So this is the end of the work on the rudder. So my previous video was the end of the horizontal stabilizer. And then, like I said, that was eight. This is seven. I had go, gone back and finished this. So now I'm done with this. So this is uh, two sections. And there it is in all its glory. So awesome. Good times. Um, and after this, it's back to the elevators. See ya.